these are days to explore new understandings of the universe. Science is always discovering new realities, and so too must the spiritual realm. Uh, for how we get along, we need to start asking ourselves some new questions. And so the news is great here at this channel. Uh, this is the latter-day mountain of the Lord where he is removing the rebuke of all peoples of the earth by giving his message of Malachi 3, 1, that prepares his way. And that message is, I am your God. You are my people. I have forgiven you. And I will never remember it. Sending Satan to the pit for a thousand years as it is foretold in the latter days in Revelation 12 and Daniel 12, 1. But yet, no one is reacting at all to the truest truth, the crescendo of love. And so the news is great. Our Lord God is alive. He can appoint in the latter days a new name for Israel. Isaiah 62, 2 said that he would, and he has. It is Chrislam, and people are not reacting, even though Israel has inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3, no one believes anything that I am saying. So why are not the doves flying, the knees kneeling, the hands clapping? Shiloh has come, Elijah am I. I have embraced that destiny, the latter-day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, who has arisen to do just that. So why are not the knees kneeling, the hands clapping? Why aren't the horns blowing? Because if I am who I claim to be and I am, then Jesus is right behind me. And so why aren't the tambourines playing, the bells pealing? Why are not the trumpets blaring? Do we have to turn up the volume? Why are not the cymbals clashing, the crowds clamoring? Why are not the hearts rejoicing and the eyes smiling? Why are not the bands marching, the banners flying? Why aren't voices of great expectation calling thankfully unto the Lord, saying thank you for revealing that wide is the way unto hell, paved by our conditional love? that we must beat the sword into the sickle in order to learn the way of war no more. We must change our undivine conditional love into unconditional love, for we have created false God in this world that is a respecter of men that loves us best. So with this news, uh, narrow is the way to heaven, paved by... Uh, paid by our unconditional love. That is why Jesus said we must be again as a little child. For if we do not become as little children again with love that is alive as a verb instead of love that is dead, a dead letter, uh, uh, just a noun, uh, not going anywhere, all conditional, that has never existed. So it is time to realize that the Lord God Almighty is the God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32. 27. He declares it, which means uh, I am the Lord God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and uh, Jacob. That means they were his and uh, he was theirs. Uh, it, it means the same thing. I am the Lord God of all mankind. And we've never had the true Christ in the world who is the good shepherd over all the flocks of man as that roaring, uh, roaring lion of Zion roars louder than ever before. So as Elijah, I want to know, why are not our eyes smiling? I am one with staggering sh uh, uh, lips, scorned lips, lips that are fed up of rejection. Uh, I am one with stammering, shocking lips of Isaiah 28, scorn, because uh, I don't understand why the bands aren't marching. Uh, Emmanuel, or God, with us wants to return soon. Why aren't the banners flying? Why aren't the voices calling? Why aren't the hearts rejoicing? Why aren't tongues out there praising? Why will nobody leave me a hello? Why aren't the choir singing? Why aren't children laughing? Why aren't arms waving and the bells pealing like thunder? I would really like to know. And so I've got a few more questions.
questions. And at the end of the day, we need some new understandings. Um, I am one line by line, precept by precept, with a strong and mighty one of love come forth as a destroying storm, pulling down distortionalities of fake love that has always been uh, conditional. Who would uh, is foretold to come before Christ? Uh, Jesus says, surely Elijah will come first before me to restore all things. I cannot restore anything if anybody will not even give me the time of the day. I preach to static electricity and white noise in this world. And no one can uh, embrace the truth because they only want truth for their narrow-minded religions. So Adonai's victorious voice of love is now booming louder than ever before. And so in this hour, it's time to raise up our hands high unto heaven. And for in this hour of love's greatest power being revealed, his power of love is now thundering all over Earth's circle while drowning out terrible screams of agony coming from uh, billions of people that are hiding their light and only letting conditional love come forth. So it's time to come out from under the Satan's bloodiest throne, for he has been removed in accordance with Revelation 12 in the latter days of his uh, latter day uh, selected woman gospel writer. Uh, Shiasa of House of Beloved. Hello, Shiasa. And uh, so in this hour, it is time. Uh, so accursed therein under his, his uh, disgraced and abandoned throne uh, of Satan's left behind uh, fallen principality is his machine of war since that weapon will stop prospering as all things of darkness discover that their days are actually doomed. These are the days for the mark of the Lamb, Revelation 9, 4, to put the number 777 upon our brows. These are the days of the removal of the veil as God removes all condemnation and rebuke from off all of his people, from off all the nations, as it is clearly written in uh, Isaiah 25, from off his latter day mountain, covered with spiritual food for who will come and feed the master's household food and meat while the master is away Christ asked it is Elijah who would restore all things Matthew 24 45 and so in this hour Lucifer's beastly number 666 is now reserved for every apostate faithless soul not taking the curse of the total oblivion of mankind Malachi 4 6 deathly serious for ahead of us there would be uh, no birds, no fish, no mankind. That's why Jesus said that unless his word cut these days short, his word revealed by his messenger who I am, his latter day Shiloh of Genesis 49, 12, who holds the scepter of all kingdom age authority. Genesis 49, 12 has foretold me as one with eyes red from THC, dull of wine, but the just damn well better live by my faith uh, of Habakkuk too, for uh, my heart is as hell and can never be satisfied as I embrace all people of the earth unto myself, who is the risen majesty of majesties, who was slain before the foundation for all people. He is our beloved. And this way he now comes and know that it is time to realize that all every a faithless apostate, apostate soul not welcoming this kingdom age message will receive a diarrhea dung crap pie up their nose like a rubber hose. Uh, and I am the one with scorn fucking lips uh, to speak into a deaf world. And so I uh, look at in, uh, Isaiah 28, read them and weep. Uh, it's time to pull down all distortionalities. Uh, this is what unsealing the seals is all about. This is what removing the veil is all about. This is what the, the, the mystery of God being over of Revelation 10, 7 in the latter days is being all about. It is change. It is beating our sword into the sickle. That's what that is all about. 
Uh, and so in this hour, not to make an intelligent, informed decision about such things uh, becomes terribly insane to make, not to make a decision to try to understand what the hell I'm saying is the most stupid, foolish thing any, any intelligent being alive, especially when faced with the, the great bear of Daniel 7, 5, hearing the words, now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like, Daniel 7, 5. And so when the senses are shaken, uh, when they are shaken and souls are driven into madness, who can stand? When everyone is convinced of the dove's legitimate prophecy of the Lord's hidden mystery, the veil that he's now removing off all peoples of the earth, Isaiah 25, who can stand? Uh, listen now to that which is proclaiming unto all people uh, the truth, and who will stand in the midst of this? And of the fools who don't act with uh, those of faith's knowingness, who could stand as they roll over like disobedient dogs playing dead? Who could stand next to that? And so it is time. And when these days are burning as an oven over man's sizzling of motions because our whole brain-dead race is about to die, who can stand in those days? And so it is time to realize the blessedness that the Lord would bring. And so listen to this. And I do love each and every one of you, uh, regardless of what you do or do not believe about me is irrelevant. But it is criminal to ignore a passion at such a channel of uh, the messenger of love and not to want to hear it. So it's time that we all need to follow a simple code, a new code. It's about helping a chap who's bearing a, a load. It's about bringing a smile to a youngster's face. It's about restoring his trust in the human race by us showing our love and our kindness to one another. It's about sharing the warmth of year in joys with thousands of worthy little boys and girls and other brothers of other mothers. It's about helping the young and the old to know that someone cares when ill winds blow. It's soothing the way when the road is rough. It's all about lending a hand when the going is tough. It's understanding a neighbor's plight. It's caring enough to do, finally to do what is right. It's about living the ancient law when the good Samaritan came and saw and did not pass on the other side. If that's what it's all about at this Christmas time. But instead, that good Samaritan offered his hand, a friend to guide. Uh, so this is the good fellow's code for all people to bring forth the best of life. Uh, and so, and that the worth of, of it is not about how much we can get for ourselves, but how much we can do for others. That's why I preach to a loveless world that will not even say, hello fucking you fucker, to me. <laughs> I mean that in the kindest way, I love you. And I should not swear, excuse me, I'll get some uh, soap and water, we'll wash that sucker right out. And so in these days, these are the days that are burning as an oven. And I will be right back. So it is time to take a new look at how the heavens are spinning. Because a new heavens and a new earth means totally new understandings unto one and all of us. And so in these days of Inya, Inya, uh, and the beautiful music. When the souls of the oppressed fight in the troubled air that rages, who can stand? Or when the whirlwind of fury, of uh, twisted spiritual bigotry and racism and the gross darkness thereof, of uh, the lack of the understanding of love, 
And when that whirlwind of fury comes from the great white throne to tear everything down, as uh, Jeremiah 110, Haggai 2 2, Isaiah 25 says, it's the removal of the veil that has covered all mankind. And when the frowns of his countenance drives the nations together, who can stand without enlightenment, which is the falling away of our falsehoods? And who will be brave enough to leave any places of God's worship that refuses to lift up uh, unconditional love unconditionally? Who can stand against that? The wheat and the tares cannot grow together anymore. I am Elijah. And further, who can stand in the face of dividing congregations, uh, discovering that judgment really does begin in the house of God? And who can stand when sin claps his broad wings over the battle and sails rejoicingly into a great flood of death? Uh, and who can stand during times of great deceit and when naive souls are damned by their very own lack of knowledge and their lack of love, thereby being tossed into the everlasting fire of perishing, reserved for all those committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit who can stand. And when the fiends of hell rejoice, uh, the locked up removed Satan of Revelation 12 in the latter days, and when he and all his other fiends of hell rejoice upon the slain, who can stand? Uh, who can stand against that? And so in this time, it's time to reflect the good news. And who has asked this and who can answer at my throne? Asks our majesty of majesty, our king of lords and our lord of kings. He asks and he says, I will therefore send my messenger of my last covenant, my latter day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, the alcoholic of Zechariah 3, standing before my great white throne with Bart, the alcoholic of Genesis 49, 12, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine. The alcoholic, says the Lord of Habakkuk, uh, transgressed by wine, but the just will live by his faith anyways. Because there is no damn good man, says Elijah, uh, Romans 3.10. Uh, it has never been about us. It's what about Christ has done for us. Slain before the foundation of the earth for all people that will not commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit to kick him right out of us. For all those who love are born of him and know him because he is love. And so who will prepare the way before me other than Daniel uh, as he declares the absolutely truth that nobody living in this year 2022 even believes my word of earth's curse written in all the prophets, written in Matthew 24, 45, uh, 22 rather. Uh, written in Malachi 4, 6, Zephaniah 1, 1, Deuteronomy 18, 18, Acts 3. Uh, people, nobody is believing anything. What is ahead of us is a world with no birds, no fish, no mankind. No more time for any of us. If people will not see the signs, look up and see the new heavens and the new earth spinning around. So who can stand when... The Lord says, when Daniel comes forth as my third Elijah, the one who prepares his way, and who can stand uh, the blazing fire that he brings forth with all of heaven's authority, as it is foretold in Isaiah 49, for one who has brought forth the everlasting gospel of creation. Just Google it, or put it in the, uh, listen, it's about 150 videos down. And who will believe my truth that the spirit of Moses as my lawgiver of love is upon Daniel. And uh, he has been chosen by my providence. And Daniel alone will be able to accomplish earth's salvation through my weeping spirit of love, says, says the Lord, who mourns for lost, unloving souls who can be found if only they would believe my law of love. And so the Lord says, I am your God. You are my people. I forgive your iniquity. We'll never remember it. Ending all religion on earth as Hebrews 8 foretold and foretells. And for th those reasons, the Lord says, it is now the wondrous time of my fulfillment 
of Jeremiah 31, 30, uh, 31, for the day of my son of uh, righteousness and love and judgment over all people has come forth. And that son of justice now arises, the son of mercy, to destroy all the gross darkness, fleeing away at that line of Zion's softest whispering command. For it's not by power nor by might, but it is only by the spirit of love that all things shall be accomplished. And for he says, I am Jehovah Nisi, who is the banner of love over absolutely all men. Uh, I am Lord God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27, which means the same thing as I am the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It means all mankind is mine and I am theirs. Religion twisted that uh, understanding so that uh, it pitted all people against all people. And so now it's time for the untwisting. And so I am Jehovah uh, Nisi, uh, the banner of love over all of us. Uh, and so in these days, uh, there is no conditions uh, upon those of love, as it is written in Jeremiah 31, aside from people being able to love even their enemies. If you cannot love your enemies, you cannot love God. If you cannot love someone that you, uh, that you can, uh, can see, you cannot love one whom you cannot, declares the Lord. And so this is the end of the mystery of Revelation 10:7. The seven trumpets sounded first, the first is last, and the last is first, and all now all nations have become the Lord's, and Israel has inherited all mankind, Isaiah fifty four three, and they are now given the name Chrislam, Isaiah sixty two two said God would do that in the latter days. For this is the fullness of the law of Moses is the law of love. Uh, and it is there being lifted up as a new white standard in this dark world, unloving world. For all those walking in such love uh, are, shall never be condemned. For there is no condemnation for those walking with the Spirit. They are assured of the Lamb's everlasting life. For they are adorned with the mark of the Lamb, 777 as it was foretold in Revelation 9.4. They will never be uh, uh, condemned. So behold my chosen. He has now given forth the new covenant and brings forth a brand new ark for survival. And it comes forth within this word of scripture. For God's word was only closed until the time of the end. Uh, and it is happening exactly. This is the vision of Habakkuk that will cause the Lord's glory to cover the earth as waters cover the seas. For the Lord says, I am the Messiah of forgiveness, Christ Isa, Yeshua, Jesus, the Lord of all. And I will put my law and love into all people's hearts. And so it is time to realize, uh, as he calls us, I have a few more questions. So why do Pharisees of bigotry and twisted spiritual racism, why do they want, want to stay deaf unto love's uh, revealed word of Daniel 12, uh, 9? For God's word is flowing again as it was foretold. And so why are people who are fully sighted out there choosing to want to remain blind to love's deepest truths? Uh, I would like to know, and why can't people actually believe the word of 1 John 4, 7 was written for all people, all of mankind, all those who love as a little child, for all those who have not committed the unforgivable sin of casting all their love right out of them and why is God's glory of hope not being lifted up here at this channel why do I preach to static to white noise why is the prophecy of, of uh, 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 that uh, the Bible has made to make a way where there has seemed to be no way to bring us love and survival 
why is that prophecy here at this channel of no damn good value to anyone at this apostate world? For there is nobody uh, living or dead that will say to me, I believe everything that you say the Bible says. Uh, and no one believes anything that I read. Uh, why don't you believe that Jesus Christ did not do everything in vain? Isaiah 49, 4. I have preaching to a fucked up world that does not believe any of the prophecy of this Bible. Why do Christians not believe that Christ is the good shepherd over all the flocks of man? As he said in John, he has not changed. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Why do you not believe that he is the good shepherd uh, who is the God of all mankind? Uh, and why is the first great harvest of love's beginnings. Uh, why is this not beginning automatically in the world since I am preaching the absolute harvest message where Christ is revealing that he is the sower of the seed of love who has overtaken his reaper? And why are people ignoring the Lord's messenger who I am? I am the messenger of Malachi 3, one, bringing forth his message of his unadulterated word, not added to by twisted religion, because the truth is, 2,000 years ago, early Christian says, we are Israel, and all the prophecy is for us, and they eliminated all mankind, and they took a line spiritually, and they put a line through Jeremiah 32, 27, the true part, uh, recipients of his message of love. And so in this hour, we need to ask a few more whys. So get ready, and I'm going to give you the best whys in about one more minute. Two more minutes. <laughs> hey, guess what? Ask yourself, what if the Lord was not talking in riddles when he bluntly said that these days would be as the days of Noah? What if the prophesied curse of the end days found in Malachi's chapter 2 to 4, 4, 6, the destruction of all earth, what it if it is really a vision of a shattered earth, as Isaiah 24 predicts? What if the word of God was not literal about earth passing away? What if, or what if it is 100% literal? And it would be, we are simply at a place of choice. There are two destinies written in the Bible, uh, total destruction, life, or uh, death or life and uh, salvation, and uh, both are recorded. What if God really meant what he said when he told Israel that they would live forever on the same land uh, that he had given it to Jacob? And what if the gross darkness all about us has made all people of religions totally blind to the death that is almost here as a great tsunami that would wipe away all mankind, Zephaniah 1.1? 1, 1. And what if that prophecy can be stopped since it is conditional prophecy, just as God did not destroy Nineveh and Jonah 4, even after he said he would? The Bible says he relented. And what if the arising sun of righteousness is really ready to destroy all the darkness of ignorance? And what if people have always had a distorted view of everything, uh, of everything, looking through a glass darkly, like the Bible says, uh, since his mystery of Revelation 10, 7 was still in force? And what if his word of change was only sealed, uh, as Daniel 12, 9 asserts, only closed till the time of the end, uh, and not closed at all at this point. What if all spiritual truth has really been restored by me as Elijah, by giving the kingdom age covenant to all mankind as it is addressed, but the Pharisees of this world do not know and do not want to believe anything that I'm saying. And the, you know that's why Jesus said that the wheat and the tares would not be able to grow uh, in this hour any longer. 
What if this word of change, of beating our sword into the sickle to learn the ways of war no more, what if this is all valid? And what if God wants everyone to hear this word? The Bible says it must go again to all people, to all tribes, to all nations, to everlasting gospel with his everlasting covenant. And yet no one ever likes anything that I ever do. And they are spitting at Christ. And uh, these are the people that will not like this channel are the ones that God is going to put a diary of shit, dumb crap pie of Malachi to. That is the curse. God's going to put in the face of all the Pharisees who will not embrace that which glorifies his kingdom of love. And, and no one uh, that is not uh, liking my stuff, uh, none of them like their own religion because this is... This is proving everybody that listens to me is a total hypocrite. And that's the bottom line. They're spiritual racists and they're bigots that don't know the truth from a hole in the ground. And they're just proving themselves to be assholes if they keep it up and do not repent because they'll probably kiss their ass goodbye a lot earlier than otherwise if this word of God's love, uh, if this word gets out and people actually believed it, it would end racism on planet Earth. But people like this twisted, fucked up world for some reason. And because this word preaches the unconditional love and people are not in favor of this. What a what a insanity. That is why religion is obsolete. This is the only truth being preached. Uh, that which House of Beloved is preaching, that which is uh, love, a light, red ruddy is preaching, and Anna Grace. Uh, hi, Anna of uh, Mind Forward. Uh, so uh, listen to these people like uh, Trey Smith. He's got some good messages out there too. And I love uh, I love you, Morg, of Morg Official, in spite of... Uh, uh, railing him a bit, and I actually love uh, one of the greatest testimonies that I have ever seen, bar none, was Act 17, uh, the Islamic uh, apologist David Wood. Punch in David Wood's personal testimony if you want to hear something that will be music to your heart, and uh, I attacked viciously uh, David Wood uh, for a very good reason, which one of these days people will come to realize why. But the the truth is that these are the days to understand what if Chrislam, Isaiah 62, 2, God's new name that he's given unto Israel, what if this one world religion of the Lord's unconditional love is the only thing that can save any of us, if we don't s swim together, we're going to all sink because uh, it, it's time to change. And what if all the answers to our difficulties are only found within this kingdom age message of the removed veil of uh, mystery uh, from off all nations? Uh, and this is dealing with his unconditional love, his law of love that is absolute. Him saying, I am your God to all people, to all people, to all people, never having been a respecter of none. I, I, saying, I'm your God, you are my people, I forgive you and I will never remember it. If you don't commit the unforgivable sin, cast love right out of you. And if you uh, will keep your love alive as a little child with your love moving as a verb. And no one likes any of this that I am preaching. I preach that people need to come out of the, the, the <laughs> you know, <laughs> they need to come out of the darkness, but they like the gross darkness and they just want to kiss their asses goodbye. I don't know, dinky subject.